There it is. There's a burp from Paul. Welcome everybody to. Fuck. Uh, oh, I burped Korean. right away. Oh, Matt, what happened? Matt, I need, I need uh, the book. Oh yeah, that would help. We're we're uh, we're pros. We're pros at this shit today, dude. Yeah, I remember one thing. You had one. You have, one, you have one job. Matt actually just read a different book by accident. <laughs> Matt. Oh, actually- <laughs> oh no! No. Matt. <laughs> shit. Matt just read a completely different book by accident. I read Flea's autobiography. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of your favorite uh, book, deep dive, long form, uh, no, no, all killer, no filler literature (laughs) podcast, uh, Spinecrackers. Yeah. I'm, I'm Gabe. I'm Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm Matt. And uh, you may have already noticed another voice in the mix. We have a very, very special guest tonight. The OG friend of the pod, the pod mama, uh, Morgan is here. That's a thing. Right? Pod, that so pod mama. Pod mama's pod mama. rough. I hate that. Let's we'll, we'll that, workshop that a little bit, maybe. That sounds like an al- an insect alien species name. Like... <laughs> Pod mama. <laughs> yeah, we have to destroy the pod mama and the hive will collapse. Sounds like a great vanity license plate. Pod mama. <laughs> <laughs> I could just fucking will like Felix Biederman's mom just drives around with the pod mama license plate in her fucking fancy car. <laughs> My son is a podcast millionaire bumper sticker. Let's go. Listen, that's what we're angling for. My podcast millionaire son could beat up your honor student. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is called the obli- an oblique strategy. We're going at it through the worst route possible, but we will mm-hmm. achieve six-figure Patreon donations. No question. It's, it's, it's aspirational. This is all aspirational. Handily. We will be, uh, we will have a Patreon at some point, probably soonish. I thought you had to pay, but I just realized it's free, so I'm gonna make one now. It makes sense with the whole notion of what it is. Yeah, that you would you would yourself have to pay for it. Yeah, I thought you I thought you had to pay a fee every month, but they just take a percentage of whatever you make, I guess. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Did we say Morgan? Did we say her name? Yeah, Morgan. We, Morgan's oh. here. I think we said that. I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for we being. should say, Morgan. What is your relationship to all of us? <laughs> That's a complicated <laughs> question. Mom, <laughs> it's mom. Just, just mom. No. Um. That's a good question. Yeah. I, uh, you don't have to divulge any information you don't want to. I mean, yeah. Identity, identity redacted. Identity redacted. <laughs> Oh, all right. Oh, wow. Kind of cool. like the uh, the author of the book we're reading today. Oh, yeah. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Oh, you're on um, point tonight. Okay. And uh, so I got to explain what it is because I'm the chooser and that's yes. how it works. You're, you're the decider. You're the George Bush of this podcast for this week. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so we uh, are discussing uh, a book called Flee, F-L-E-E, by Evan Dara. Um, this was my choice, Matthew, my choice. Uh, what do I have to do? Just sort of describe the plot the, and like, yeah, just, I mean, yeah, just kind of like general overview. What, why did you pick this book? What, why'd you want to read it? Come on. Like we, we've all done this. Before. I got it. Yeah. Uh, I picked it because, you know, I was interested in this person, this, uh, mysterious individual for, uh, I, I already kind of forget the name of the other one. The secret notebook was like the big 
or the lost scrapbook rather the, yeah, the, lo- like the lost that. scrapbook, lost scrapbook. Then, uh, easy chain and the easy, easy chain, chain was- are his other two books or there we don't even know if it's a man yeah yeah um was well, kind of like the the uh i don't know the the cool mysterious author with the mysterious book self-published etc uh that you just you know i've just heard about going through snobby booktube review sites and and bookshelf tours and whatnot have you read uh, his, any of his other any of their other books matt either of the other two no no either they're not super i mean they're not easy to get a hold of yeah um yeah so and uh i picked it because it was uh, a little bit shorter his other books are quite large Chonkers. Um, big chonky boys and uh also the subject matter from the plot synopsis just kind of intrigued me which is just that um i don't know how best to like encapsulate this it's just like there's a couple like main characters that like narrative chunks kind of swirl around and then otherwise <clears throat> this disembodied chorus of voices that comprise like the town's population kind of just talking over each other in sequences um but like basically the plot is um these people are all living in this town called uh, Ander- Anderberg. Um, in, uh, it's a fictional town in Vermont. We were discussing that it's almost definitely just an analog for Burlington, Vermont. Um, that is, I don't know how you would even describe it. Like, its energy is being sapped. People are just sort of leaving, fleeing, as the title would make you think. And, like, it's just people kind of dealing with that, essentially. Do you have a like better way to encapsulate it? No, I mean I, you know, the the like the sort of precipitating event at the beginning of the book is is <laughs> the closure of the local university, which is a big source of jobs and money and stuff for the area. Um because it it it's it's funny if if a little bit like uh it's convoluted unrealistic in terms of how it actually starts basically there's like an entire department at the university that's fake like uh, like doesn't actually exist and someone like tries to major in the i think i forget what it is is it sociology sociology yeah some kid just demands to take sociology class and the sociology department just doesn't exist apparently (laughs) and then like this yeah like this weird shit they're getting federal funding and like yeah, uh, to maintain some sort of quota of humanities classes of which sociology falls into that category. And like this one kid just blows up their whole spot. And they're yeah. like, OK, well, now the entire university is broke because it's a house of cards. Yes. Um, and so that I mean. We spoiler alert, I, you know, I work in academia in, to some in some capacities mm-hmm. and that's. I don't think that could ever actually happen. So I don't know if that's like, like in terms of just a fake department. So I don't know if that was intentional as like a humor absurd thing or how seriously we're supposed to take it. But I also just took this generally to be sort of a, a tale of the financial crisis and its effect on like a small fucking town. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a what, 2013 mm-hmm. publication? Yeah. It definitely, I I found it definitely also like inadvertently echoes some of the just the COVID stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Towns. yeah, definitely. Like, there's even like a theory that floats around for a short while about an illness that people are trying to leave town to avoid getting. They're trying to flee. Yeah, as as many times as we can say that. <laughs> yeah, there's it, it's brought up a few times, but it's not really. Uh, elaborated on that there's there's this weird disease that's really laying people out or going around but that's never really fleshed out as a thing well just like a lot of weird i don't know like you don't you don't find out there's no there's no big bad reveal right you don't find right the monster behind it all there is arguably just the kind of monstrous omnipresence of cap capitalism i only almost hate to because it's like so why you got to make it political matt fuck this is a this is a political book this is the most this is maybe the most political book we've read outwardly so you really couldn't just create a shell game of like fake 
departments and then just get funding by like functioning as though they exist. I, it seems every, like if it, all it, the professors were like, we're doing, we're, we're all in on it and we're doing it. It what, could not happen. I mean, making a fake it, department. It, it reminded me because I just watched the wire it reminded me of season three of the wire when they make like that uh, safe zone for the drugs where it's like Hamsterdam? in a show format. Yeah. In a show format, it seems like, far-fetched but it's done in a realistic way and i kind of think maybe that's what he was going for like a little far-fetched but possibly believable but if you're not actually in academia you wouldn't realize that it's definitely not possible most likely well we were we were talking about this a little bit like and it if it maybe if it was some like really obscure major or concentration or a couple of like set of courses or something Maybe like if it was like, you know, fucking, you know, Russian literature or something, maybe right. but like sociology is kind of a core, <laughs> a core yeah, thing, yeah. especially at like a liberal arts university that th which this place yeah, sort of implied to be. Yeah, a little bit of be. an odd premise. Yeah. I think sure what to make of it. I think you're right. It's just probably absurd for the sake of being absurd. And also maybe just uh, an attempt to create a comparison between something that's that is absurd and could probably or, or like just couldn't exist it's untenable in a university setting or whatever but it's kind of analogous to uh um like certain economic practices yeah of just like you know whatever you would call it like futures and derivatives and all that kind of thing just sort of value existing on nothing on the expectation of value or I, I, that was my sort of guess as to why that was no i think that's there. a really good point that it's sort of just like a not, a, not, a, not a metaphor i guess is not the right word but like a another a, a sort of example or like a different a different like modality of basically what happened in the housing crisis was there was a, a bunch of shit that people thought existed and right. someone poked at it and it didn't and everything kind of mm -hmm. fell apart yeah like it's you know it's this thing that created the value of the town that that bursts because it's made of nothing right yeah i hadn't made that connection but that yeah that makes that makes sense but then yeah. once it once it starts oh sorry go ahead paul no i was gonna say it's like it's a it's like a fragmented burst of information that we get we don't we don't totally know what happens really but that i think it also like I, I would describe like the whole book is pretty fragmented like i i listened to one review and the guy said that Evan Dara, he said Avon Dara for one thing, which was weird. Evan Dara. Yeah, that's a Evan Dara. That's a sweaty. What? That's a sweaty pronunciation. Try hard. Um, yeah. But he's he said Idiot. that he writes in a way that's like uh, like turning a radio dial, like you're just constantly turning it and getting yeah. to different stations, and that's totally how it, like the dialogue felt for sure. Apparently, that's something that they do. That's what the lost scrapbook is. That's what the other one was that I'm forgetting. How, how does that writing style compare to sort of other stuff you all have read so far? Like, is this something, because I know you've read books that have had interesting approaches, but how does it compare to other stuff you've read with, with the style? Uh, for me, I thought it was pretty unique in stuff that I've read. Yeah. I've read, period, for this podcast or, or outside of it. I, I've never really read anything quite like it in terms of the way it's written. It's like these snippets of speakerless dialogue interspersed with like shorter like you know maybe, maybe like a couple pages sections of like sort of traditional, like monologue. traditional descriptive text about mm -hmm. like a couple characters that we wind up focusing in on that we talk about it reminded me of like a fucking like it reminded me of like a richard linkletter movie or something like slacker <laughs> or like yeah. some of these other movies that just kind of like bounce around sort of like slice of life like a bunch of different unnamed characters like that sort of thing because you, you I can't remind to... oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I go, go I was gonna say the, the only book I was really thinking of was a little bit of last last samurai but not it wasn't even to that degree like the fragmentation of the of the dialogue in particular reminded me of last samurai but mm -hmm. it still even in last samurai it wouldn't like jump from a character to a totally different character in a different place you don't even know who the character is like it 
it took that fragmented nature to like a really high level. It was pretty, I mean, for me, it was pretty difficult for, for me to read it. I agree. Follow with what it. was going on. Yeah, I found it very challenging and I found myself like having a hard time reading it slowly and deliberately, like the sort of fragmented chaotic nature of it made me feel like I kept like the speed of my reading. I really had to go back and reread many portions of it where I felt like I was speeding through it. I don't know what about the style made me feel like I couldn't, it was very chaotic, yeah. not like very chaotic. Well, one thing, one thing I do on the podcast when we're, I, I, if I, if I am reading like the first 20 pages and I'm like, I don't know if I'm reading this correctly. I'll like read a review and be like, and just see what other people do to read it or like what, how they read it. And it's yeah. like, and, and one, one uh, review I said, said that it's like, he, he kind of just went on for the ride. Yeah. But another one, I, I, I actually found, found a website of this guy who's like obsessed with Evandara and he has this site where he just he looked up like every single word that he didn't know and and dart and flee and just like obsessed over the whole thing right on um and he was like obsessed with maps so he was like really fascinated about where all the locations were and stuff mm -hmm. so i think that i don't know for me i read it more like i'm not gonna look up all these things i'm just gonna read it and like have the experience of it bless yeah. bless those kinds of people though for real seriously yeah doing the lord's work it, uh, so so wonderful and unhealthy yeah. but wholesome somehow at the same time exactly. <laughs> i think the word valise was used one time too many i could have used one one fewer valise is i don't remember valise oh valise really stuck out i feel like it how was, many times did you find because i think i think it was three <laughs> times I think, oh, okay. I think it was at least three times and i was like just say fucking bag honestly <laughs> yeah like, it's three, a fucking bag let's not <laughs> three strikes and you're out fucking I mean, yeah one thrice thrice with the valise no. that's an official official podcast rule if you use the word valise three times your book is trash automatic <laughs> it's trash, trash dude. book dude get on point you're trash you're trash uh, you're the, I, was, I, I, was, I had a similar experience to, to and then and then yeah i had a similar experience <laughs> with you morgan reading it in terms of like just it feeling very like <laughs> propulsive and like cascady like i was just, i felt like i was just like whoa 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 it was a very like <laughs> hey it was very like water slidey or like rolling downhill sideways type experience i almost like us talking over yeah. each other as like another mimicry of the of the experience itself oh, <laughs> just us, whoa. listen we can i'm it's the dow man this is I just, meta. yeah this is meta, so, dude. Performance art. Until the until the end, where I feel like you just hit a wall, and it's very deliberate. Yes. And it. I found it very enjoyable at the at the end. That second but, to last chapter. Yeah. Still perplexing yeah, though. That was like, I, that was my favorite part too. Yeah. Marcus. I just wanted to read a little chunk that I think corroborates the whole notion that the the school is some sort of weird semi metaphor, if that's a term. Uh for like an economy making yeah. terrible decisions which is just the administrators are all kind of like puzzling over why this one dumb kid kept demanding to take sociology classes like a fucking nerd yeah so uh the it just goes the administrators the enablers wally continued all of them wondered out loud why why would a student elect to do this why make so counterintuitive a choice what manner of reasonable being opts for such a selection when the computer science building is so orthogonal and sleek, so very well provisioned? And like, yeah, just like the, it just feels a little bit like a mixture of using, ra weaponizing rational choice theory, which is already wrong uh, in an attempt to like uh, create things that seem like the rational choice, but are in fact self-harmful to the, massive amount of the population as well you know what i mean yeah yeah that's it yeah. that's my only other piece of evidence there for that no i mean i think it's yeah it's it, it's a it had it has a very like yeah fucking enron bear stearns type description of it enron <laughs> whoa f, back. f in the chat for enron yeah <laughs> r.i.p enron <laughs> Um, did you guys did you guys think of uh the two characters rick and carol did you picture them as rick and carol from the walking dead yes absolutely the whole time oh my so, god i didn't even what didn't even the whole time 
the whole time I was like, oh, this is like an alternate reality if Rick and Carol were married. Oh, <laughs> everything's a sequel to everything. That yep. sounds that sounds fun, and I don't like that I didn't have that option in my brain. I knew Paul would. <laughs> yeah, it's thong song. <laughs> <laughs> I like this is like the Mandela effect, like the thong song, like effect or whatever. Oh well, yeah, I was also Paul and Morgan just... have a just for a little context. Paul and Morgan have a mental connection that's uh, uh, supernatural. Yeah, it knows <laughs> it knows no <laughs> geographical any areas in the universe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's across state lines, but also the whole universe. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are quantum entangled. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> should well, we, also, did, did, is, I was just going to read a piece to just give people a better sense of the way most of the writing is, uh, the, the sort of like actual text. Just It's very short, but like this is just kind of like, I don't want to say the preponderance of the book is like this, but a big, big chunks of it are. And we'll talk, we can talk about the whole Rick and Carol sections and then the Marcus <laughs> section. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. But so this is at the title, the beginning of chapter. It's on page uh, fucking thirty-five. It's at the beginning of. <laughs> it's on fucking page. Uh... Fucking. Uh, it's at the beginning of chapter thirty-five thousand seven hundred and seventeen. <laughs> yeah. which, which we'll talk about. Um, it's it just it says burr bree still so damn shit oh freeze the winter's never gonna question mark bree come on pick up pick. Where mother plucker look at already stitch on the index finger ripped all the suffering springing out dot 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 I gotta next year I this it's three times I call her where Bree next year <laughs> some new gloves next year so how do I need paper towels the role is Don likes one put like a diamond on his plate in the morning usually they advertise in so like should I just go over to because like where are the specials today at Shaw's. Mandy, I mean, just take a look outside. You really need to check the weather. So look, okay, right the, right here. There's every possible fact about football right here on the USA Today webs. It's just very, that's sort of like representative of the like jangly, like jumpy, jumpy kind of, yeah, fragment. Well, it, yeah, I mean, that makes me think of the radio dial thing, but I think a better analogy would be like, you know, those, those things cops use that are like, they're, they're like big cones that have a microphone and they listen in on people far away yeah it was like it's like the narrator is just going over this vermont town and like yeah in a drone and like pointing in people's houses and he'll zero in every once in a while on like a longer conversation yep that's a good I think but it's a good analogy but I, it's still it was difficult to read and follow and be like does this information relate or have any namesake and what's like actually happening or is it just like a I, I don't know. I didn't really know what to think of when it was super cluttered like that. I think people are meant to kind of recur eventually. Like, I think it's an, it's so disorienting and cacophonous initially. And it, it kind of stays that way. But, like, I think Dara is, like, attempting through, like, speech ticks and, like, subject matter of what someone's speaking about to kind of create characters completely out of dialogue or whatever of uh, vocalizations i mean he he gets the comparison <clears throat> to another you know whatever almost like eye-rollingly big name but like jr by gaddis is is composed entirely of of unattributed dialogue right and so like that's the big thing is like you try and create a character by restricting yourself from description or like becoming too flowery. It's like, no, it's like literally what are they saying? And then it, I think it functions on the other end of just, he wants a cacophony. He wants the town to be made up of all of these fragmentary voices that don't even end up finishing their sentences ever. Yeah, and you know, that was a, a, a bit of an extreme example that I picked. You know, there's a lot, some of it is more, more yeah. focused than that, more, you know, there's, we get, extended sequences where we realize we're in a town meeting or some sequences where we realize we're in a bar or you know whatever shit like that where it's like a little bit more that the picture comes through a little bit more and then and then of course the other half of the book basically because the book eventually starts to alternate between these sections of that sort of thing and just 
traditional descriptive prose about a couple, you know, three or four characters that we wind up focusing in on. Yeah. And they're just like, they're in a different font. Yep. Uh, and it's Carol and Rick, who initially we get introduced to Rick. I know, I don't have a- Rick. I don't have a visual for these people that you guys- Coral. No. Coral. <laughs> Fuck, I hate missing out. Uh, but initially it's a pretty funny sequence where he's trying to, Rick is trying to get like, uh, uh, what is it? Solar panels? He's trying to get people to, to sign on for a solar panel plan to bring to the I town. I thought that was gonna that was gonna stick around longer. Me too. So like that that was right. like, that seemed like a pretty important thrust of the plot, and then that just seemed to go away entirely. Bye bye. I mean, no one is <laughs> the people the, the people that are that get description and aren't weird. Dara has a weird uh, the, they they're weird people, right? Yeah. Like anyone who gets a kind of longer focus and description outside of what they're saying is strange and doesn't feel quite real yes I, yeah i found that it i totally agree i was just saying this to, to morgan before we started like some of the dialogue and some of the like actions that these people take just felt very not it, not like just off somehow like it's not yeah. it's not exactly that it's like bad writing but like Every once in a while, there's like a word or a turn of phrase thrown in there that I'm like, this person would never fucking say that just right. based on the little that I know of them. Just like shit like that. And it it's it's a weird it's this weird thing now where it's like, you know, because I've heard other authors describe this process where it's like, oh, I need to write a, a I need to write somebody. Do I write somebody in dialect? Do I do I do I squash down my uh, my own, you know, immense vocabulary to yeah. more aptly portray this other person or do i sort of stylistically just allow them to say what i would say but they're just this other you know there's some whatever like in this case sometimes like a, a blue collar you know pipe fitter with uh you know a ged or whatever like right. uh so yeah i don't know but yeah i it felt like it harmed the impact of the book a bit because yeah at least for this one it felt very important that the few people we get to be see more fleshed out be real yep. and it's like the whole point is like a sense of place and like the town th these people that we're paying attention to the town is getting gutted and yeah i don't know it's just it you don't want to be alienated from them yeah well yeah it, it almost like it almost seemed like the book in the beginning was more like uh like a uh i don't know an investigator or some sort of reporter or something gathering information and when the characters did start to be a little less real it, it was drawing for me too it was like yeah it just seems off i mean w one interesting theory i read on that guy's website was that he was convinced that like half the characters were just autistic and i was like i mean maybe but i think that dara is doing something a little bit different than just making these people like have a mental illness of some kind well, one of them very prominently is at the end. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I wasn't I sure. In, in Marcus's chapter, they they mention autism, or or Carol does. Yeah, when Carol which, meets. Which meets I think up is really him. interesting that like the one character that we actually get like a real glimpse into is a character like a neurodivergent character. And that yes. seems to be the most right. like cohesive part of the book, which I think is really interesting that, I, you know, that that sort of the, the, the most insight and the most sort of like narrative structure that we get or insight into a character's kind of inner world is is a character that's like highly neurodivergent. I think that's interesting. Yeah, that is. A, I think that's a good point. So so like what happens is there. Yeah. So just to like tell people what the fuck we're talking about this like I said, there are these sections throughout where Rick and Carol, and there's another character, what's I was Ian. Ian. Ian, the who's sort of like homeless, kind of a drifter. Um who <laughs> what I forgot his name. Is that what no, you're they're just about? laughing at Rick and Carol still, I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. And so Rick and Carol basically they're they're dating, basically, right? And mm -hmm. yeah. Rick Rick is a former professor. You don't like that? 
I just, I find, I'm sorry, I've, I'm cutting you off. No, it's, I don't care. You don't I like just, dating? I found the descriptions of the intimate moments made, made me want to jump out a window. <laughs> Well, that was that's a perfect example of when the, a character suddenly says stuff that I'm like, oh, what like, the fuck? Her description of like pubis, the word pubis was used. <laughs> like, I just fucking can't. I can't. My mom's my mom's pubis was <laughs> flush with your fucking. Like, I saw pubis. I had to fully put the book down for like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just reading the word pubis makes you put a book down pudendum to pudendum i'm not strong enough the, the sperm course through his vase deference <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a random like med- medical term yeah <laughs> this is kind of through the, through the moment off a little bit it is yeah. i mean it is uh just uh, I, I do find it to be one of these amazingly consistent um litmus tests for authors to describe any sort of sexual encounter yeah like it really like you can see some great people shit the fucking bed yeah it really like, it's a make or break moment yeah they're like uh she took his glands into and you're just like <laughs> <laughs> boo nerd i know it's like fucking <laughs> these authors need to wise up and start like farming it out to like reddit sex trolls <laughs> they would get way better shit like if you're an, if you're a famous author and you need a sex scene you gotta find someone on reddit to ghost write that shit because yeah. they'll do a way yeah. better job than you yeah so carol describes to rick who's takes ends you know whatever we're jumping all over the place but like I if I I, I want to find it because it's so fucking awkward. Well, but like, well, so just okay. The thing that I just just in terms of the structure of the book, I just wanted to get on the table that right. Mm. A lot of it is this that the sort of choppy dialogue stuff that we've talked about, and then there's these extended like normal narrative scenes of Rick and Carol who are trying to get a business like start up a business to try to like you know come back from you know Rick. I think was a professor at the university, right? They both seem to have like, yeah, they both seem to just be sort of adrift and yeah. have tried and they have tried to get it's it's pretty clear. I, I think it's made clear that like they, they have tried to get other shit going like they yep. like the whole solar panel venture yep. gets, gets no traction. And so this is like what they end up concocting afterwards, which is a employment office. Well, it's funny to, to get back to sort of your point, Matt, about the overall general like mirroring that a lot of these things do of the the actual causes of the financial crisis and stuff like their right. idea is basically just like a a fake it's not a fake company but it's like we're going to try to get people temp jobs and like take a percentage of their pay or it's whatever. terrible it's really yeah. predatory and kind of gross yeah. it's predatory and just like also a bad idea for the climate like they yes. they they latch on the fact that no one's working as like the necessity for the noble pursuit of employment services <laughs> yeah right, right but it just sucks shit and they don't do a good job and they get they they rope some like you know unhoused person yep. uh into the whole like process of it and it just it fail i mean it fails there's a hard jump to another basically like another point in time in the second half but yeah, yeah. It's, it looks so like anyway, it's just done so so there's those are the two main things the book is made up out of the choppy dialogue the narrative descriptions of rick and carol doing their fucking thing and ian and then there's been at the, the 10th chapter, which is the 10th chapter I counted and checked. And I think that's right. interesting because it's labeled just with the Roman numeral X and all the yes. other chapters, all the other chapters are just seemingly random numbers. And we can talk about what we think they mean. I think we probably all have some ideas, but that chapter, which is the longest one by far, um, is jumps to a new character, this guy, Marcus, or I don't know if he's entirely new. We've seen some of him at the bar with some of yeah. his friends before. Yeah. But um, it jumps like fully into his life, fully into his head. And we get this really long, rich description of like him trying to start like a holistic wellness center, basically. <laughs> um, basically called the G-spot. The G-spot. The G-spot. <laughs> For G meaning in this case, gratitude. Although Morgan is correct when she said like he gets the most yeah coherent and I, I would I would argue some of the more beautiful yeah. writing yeah. finally absolutely like yeah my you know before the whole like you know I don't know like out of left field maybe he's 
on the spectrum kind of idea. I thought this was a man who was having a manic episode. Yeah. And I was con- mm-hmm. and I was convinced that it was just a person having a manic streak. Yeah. That was gonna crash. That was like my theory until the autism thing, which honestly feels like a weaker explanation for c- what he was doing. Me too. Thinking. Me too. And I think back to my point where I I I just don't think I believed it when I read that. I thought he was just like a manic character too, and I thought that it like take it took away from the characterization of him a little bit just to make him on the spectrum in some way. I don't know. Although was he was he was that conf- I don't know if that was really confirmed though. That yeah, I don't yeah. I'm I trying to remember. Found Carol? Like Carol kind of says you don't have it though or something, but she's just kind of like commenting on all his like antipsychotics and stuff he has in his bathroom because it, it's inferred that like maybe they were an item for a little while. Yes, I I thought I thought we were supposed to uh, see that they were they had that Marcus was Carol's ex. Oh, I yeah. thought they were siblings. Oh, you I, thought they were siblings? Oh, was, no. There's, it, like, here, like, we're uh, bottom of 224. 224. Marcus, it doesn't happen that way. Carol says autism doesn't come from genes. As best oh, as maybe. Knows. Oh, maybe true. You have it. Anyone else in your family, there's a max 6%. Cro- okay, between siblings, your family. Okay, so maybe I was reading too quickly oh, and thought, okay, I thought see. it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. As, like, she was his sibling. Right. He's, he's got a kid. It's that's That is thrown out there. He has like, a kid yeah. who's kid. not in the picture anymore, it seems like. Yeah, who lives in Atlanta? No, that's where Rick goes. Rick goes. Chicago? What if, what if Marcus's kid's name was uh, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> they come full circle. Be so uh, I want to go back. I, I do want I found a really good uh, sex scene I'll, I want to read. Just nice. to back okay, back. here we go. This is an erotica it's only, book. <laughs> it's a, I'm only going to read a... a I'm only going to read a couple lines of it. Lee, more like it's, P. It's terrible. Yes. Uh, she, p- she puts one hand on the base of his backbone, the other on his penis, already erect, poking. She holds and strokes his penis, his finger trailing fists swimming up and down. Uh-huh. Then she moves closer and presses Rick is, Rick's penis vertical <laughs> between them. A, a fluorescent lamp light, lighting their bellies. Hearts grow hectic and audible. Two necks are kissed at once. Still kissing, they descend to Carol's couch. Like, has yeah. this guy ever had sex with a person before? <laughs> Maybe, I think I think one too many penis in there as well. Like we could have uh, a quick yeah, chorus, a, maybe two, two necks get kissed at, at once? once. What is the tense yeah. there? Like, why? <laughs> and uh, also know, how for the voice change. Yeah. yeah. That's just an awkward move. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for finding that, Paul. I want to find Carol's. I was trying to find Carol's dressing down of of Rick, who you know, as their as their employment services agency <laughs> starts to uh, very uh, surprisingly go down the drains and not get any people. Uh, Rick ends up being like sheepishly like, "Oh, I got a job offer in Atlanta. I think I'm probably going to take it." And then she's like, "Oh yeah, well, I guess you can say goodbye to." All of and then, this. And then she says a bunch of weird sex stuff that is so Yeah. One of the first instances where I was like, like, girl, what are you what the fuck? It, are was, you? it was overly intense. Yeah, where was that? Oh shit. We should But looked. also, like, if I was trying to think about going to Atlanta, that would that would seal the deal if someone said that to me. It's one, <laughs> it's page one. No. Is it yeah, I yeah, yeah. This is it. This the, is it. Yes. The meager sex sequences in this book only. It's this is great. Uh, is it? It might be on the next. No, it's like the middle of one fifty nine. All right, you got to read it. Morgan. I can't. Yeah, I Morgan. Morgan, Morgan you have I can't do it. I can't. It's too much. All the more you need to because of that. It, it. This is as much for you as it is for us. Exposure Where do therapy. I, start? I would start like Carol stands. Oh God, Carol stands. <laughs> Tugs her shirt to unwrinkled. She walks around the desk and comes to Rick, still standing and looking at the ground. She takes him in an embrace. Her cheek feels his warm, ripple bone <laughs> chest. He feels her splayed fingers across his back. <laughs> oh, Rick, she says, you too. Rick now hugs. I, Carol displaces, displaces by a quarter step. <laughs> so specific. Air surprises two midriffs. But maybe, Carol says, maybe you might remember a few things. 
things like my hands on the bottom of your ass as you're pumping me. I can't do it. Me whipping your nipples, your tongue dipping and dipping into my C word. <laughs> Going to give that up for a gig in Georgia. You think it's warmer down there? Wow. <laughs> wow. Bye bye. That's bye-bye. what I was saying. Or something like that. <sighs> yeah. Too great. much. That was great. That was amazing. Lipping, lipping, lipping your, your nipples. nips. Lip the nips. And again, it's like my take on Carol until this moment where I was like, ew, was uh, and also just like just awkward fucking turns of phrase for the sake of it. Uh, and was just like she was kind of like. What a pretty like a cool kind of like gritty aging towny girl, right? That's kind of how I pictured her kind of like that. She could actually look like Walking Dead Carol a little yeah. younger, a little bit younger. <laughs> Right. Like, yeah. yeah. I think just she's like 38 a, or something. When I think book. Carol, I don't think of a young person. No, 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 no. no not young. Yeah, like, but... like I would say, like, yeah, like late 30s. Yeah. Which I think is how old she's supposed 40s. to be. Yeah. I think she's 38. Yeah. Um, the the so the okay again, the I book is fragmented. Na- I just want to start naming people from our hometown, but we can't because this is uh that would be bad. <laughs> I know. I just want to <laughs> literally dox. <laughs> Ex- existing individuals with lives that's uh, that's that's patreon only information <laughs> <laughs> you can harass people we actually know for yes. a, uh, it was five dollars a month so yeah so but this is all kind of the thing is like i don't know how like cheeky evan is being right a little bit like you know he seems they i don't know again right we don't know who it is could be a consortium of people we don't know uh yeah but so like i i wanted to like just cut back to i did like the solar panel bit yeah i think let's i want to go to something that i think is done well in the book which is like the couple instances uh where the feel of um, sort of democratic decision making and deliberation uh, feels fairly accurate, especially for a smaller town. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I thought the solar panel thing was interesting. My, uh, you know, my, for, well, was, okay. So like my dad is like, he he's on the planning board for the town where I live. Uh, Topeka, Kansas. Yes. Uh, so he just kidding. He kinda, no, please do not harass the planning board of Topeka, Kansas. <laughs> no, just not not even so much like they do bad work. It's just like you know, if you go to any town hall or like a, a, just about sort of like local matters and like people want to like fucking sh- like pitch an idea, uh, and then people deliberate on it. It's it I, that felt accurate because it's like it had it had the the right mixture. Of just like stupid ass, just like yeah. like the, like a guy going like, you know, like uh, feng shui or like uh, is gonna mess with the like energy ley lines in my in my house's structure or someone's just like I don't like things above me and just like yeah. random stuff like <laughs> that being reasons why there shouldn't be solar panels to like people genuinely asking good questions about like upkeep and and right. like how uh, upfront costs are gonna be dispersed and all this kind of stuff like I think it did a really good job. <laughs> of yeah of 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 showing how fucking frustrating and complicated that is yeah and and you know that was one success i thought that happened in the book yeah yeah i i i felt like just it was in general this like really kind of like yo-yoing between moments like that of like really successful kind of hitting what i took to be this book's target which is basically that matt like describing some of the realities and like i i literally want to kill anyone including myself who uses the phrase gritty realism Ooh, but yeah you know it's <laughs> a tough one tr- sort of trying to get at the realities of like what the situation was like for tons of actual people in actual towns but but then there were all these other moments of just like what what yeah just and and like and and there were there were some like surreal kind of 
things thrown in there about like these like automatons that the city's hired to like fake walk around yes and like and like you know some other weird surreal elements like there was that we already mentioned this like sort of disease that's hinted at a couple times and I thought those were effective that's not what I'm talking about I'm just talking about like some of these like really awkward language awkward like 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 choices made by some of these characters like okay I found another one that I want to read on the awkward like the kind of weird end yeah, this is on 32. Um, and again, this is so I think this is actually just sort of following the um, scene you were describing that like the uh, 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 solar panel scene. Right. So it's on the on sort of the, the it's like that one big paragraph on 32. Oh, yeah. That I, starts, I, I literally wrote in this. I said, is this purposely strange language? Like, I don't think any of these people would really talk this way. And so it says they're they're sort of processing Rick's presentation. And there are some people in this discussion that show up later, this guy, this character, Ezra. And I'm wondering if this is supposed to be Marcus saying this, but I don't think it is, I'm not sure. Anyway, he says, I've always liked hardware stores, all the glues and the garbage pails and the adzizes and insect zappers makes you feel good. Some people think hardware stores are testaments to decay, proofs <laughs> that the creation exists to unmake itself that everything's heading drainward. Negative, just take a look and all those stores are arguing precisely the opposite, that the world can be made better, significantly better in like endless numbers of ways. They're seriously optimistic places. And I'm like, no one, who would ever say that in the context of the rest of this conversation? It's, just a, it's, it's the perfect Home Depot commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I actually I, like that description. No, I did. No, no, that's the thing. I, I, I actually did and I thought it was interesting and poetic and cool. But it took me out of the sense of like, these are fucking people who work at hardware stores in a town that's dying. Right. And once again, it's just, I, I didn't know how that, much like, leeway. That felt like leeway. something Evan Barrow wanted to say, but it didn't make sense for any of these people yeah, to say Yeah, okay, it. yeah, I get that. Right. Yeah, and and that's where like the, like, yeah, I don't me, know how much leeway to give him. Me either. Them, you know, because of like, he, you know, Evan Dara can say whatever they want. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know how, how brittle his characters are where that like you stretch them and they snap eventually. And it's like, not they're, they're kind of ruined as, I don't know, town residents. Right. I think that's, yeah, the they're, they're... Is not grounding them. If, if it's just sort of relying only on that, those moments of dialogue, right. There's, there's like, no, they're there when, mm -hmm. you know, so those moments can feel disingenuine maybe yeah if you're gonna do the dialogue only characterization thing you really right. have to like make it you you can't risk those moments as much i think yeah. yeah yeah and also people need to be more distinct than they tended to be mm. a little bit although sometimes there's so little being said in such tiny pieces yeah that it kind of didn't matter you know yeah it's just like i but so yeah me, you know what i mean but I think that, again, I think that that actually is like formally intentional yep. to just see to just see particles of words at that point. Just like that is what these people come down to ultimately and how they're regarded, you know, when they talk over each other to the point that the only thing you can make out is just like conjunctions, and right, like right. adverbs and stuff. You know what I mean? It's just like it, it's people. Well, for colliding with each other so hard that they actually end up being just like fragments of full human beings well and it, it makes them all feel a lot less realistic though and i think that's what i think that's what gabe's trying to say is it kind of takes away from what you think the the intent of the writing style in the novel is you know it 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 takes it takes you out of it for a moment i do wonder though i i, I did research the last scrapbook a lot because that's like his most famous and most reviewed mm -hmm. book <clears throat> and apparently that's a lot more like fantastical there's a lot more surrealist elements in there and i i do wonder if like this was an attempt to kind of ground himself as a writer a little bit and in doing so i think he took out probably a lot of the fantastical elements that he had in his other books but left enough in there but it wasn't like a good balance for me it was like and needed more or none at all or something it, it's like the the yeah i don't know the balance seemed just a little bit off to me. Mm. 
with the um it's funny because things it is tough like certain words like putting like into a sentence to create like somebody more what believably colloquially right. speaking and whatnot there's a lot of ways to do that verbally and it, it's kind of all rendered uniform in reading mm -hmm. so yeah I, I don't know it you know a lot of Dara's attempts to to create what casual normal sounding people with likes and man and stuff like that yes. uh, and ends up yeah it, it it ends up feeling strange and uh I was actually to bring up another you know eye roll inducing heavy hitter it sounds a lot like uh, Wallace, David Foster Wallace's mm -hmm. like writing of people like where he he'll write like and so but anyway, you know that kind of thing. I don't know which you you get what the attempt is, but you end up having to put in more more work to uh, read the tone of what's supposed to be something that's like immediately believable. You know what I mean? Like, yes. well, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Bots of New York. Like I thought that maybe. <laughs> Is actually the reason no one knows what he looks like is he's an actual AI. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. That's another yeah. theory, I think. Yeah, I got that vibe though. <laughs> but it is, yeah. you know, I mean, you know what it also reminded me of, Matt, like that whole sort of yeah, like the forced casualness or whatever. Right. It reminded me of okay, this this is going out to all the on cinema heads out there. Oh, but, yeah. Sick. but Fuck Paul, yeah. there's there's a scene, I think it's the most recent Oscar special when Tim has that that his his like son-in-law on and he's talking yeah. to him about playing video games and he's just like, <laughs> so, so like fucking like yeah, you fucking just like play Fortnite or bullshit or whatever. Like, how do you even fucking <laughs> like how do you even fucking get good at that shit? You just like you just like get in there and like fucking just just fucking smash <laughs> it or what? Like it's just like clearly it's like so funny. <laughs> Uh, and the kid's like, he's like, yeah, I bought it. I, I played it. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> That's becoming me more and more recent, like more and more. Yeah. I find myself just anyone now. I'm like, you know, it's like anytime I have to deal with like a person like 10 years, my junior, I'm like, yeah. So fucking like, what's your shit? Or like, <laughs> yeah. How, do you, how are you just, how are you like fucking so embarrassing? Vibing, are you fucking yeah. vibing today? No, nah, dude, that's lit. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> So real. I got that uh, I got that vibe a little bit from some of those passages that you're talking about, Matt. But yeah, uh, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, it's just this like disembodied chorus, but it's like a chorus just creating dissonance with each other. Mm. And I one of the other reasons why I I, I kind of picked the book is because you know again not to divulge geographical locations easily discovered about us uh but paul i was i i mentioned this to you before but like i know this is supposed to be basically a thinly veiled in, in our opinion burlington but uh just the general type of town around where you live and in fact your town and all that kind of stuff these were the these were what i was seeing in my head as i was reading and they were the, the descriptions like snowy northeastern well yeah Sem semi mid-sized kind of uh well to do but like rough around the edges kind of places right well yeah and we just talked about this today that there was a hospital that closed down in my town like 20 years ago very similarly yes. to like the hypothetical uvm in in the book and that kind of didn't destroy the town i live in but it, it definitely has its repercussions it was like most like half the town was employed by this hospital mm -hmm. for years people like everyone in the town was like born at that hospital um and now it's yeah gone. and it's huge and it's just like yeah it's like any any of the, any of these kind of uh new englandy northeast post-industrial towns with a big rotting factory at its core that you know and they found some sort of like secondary life force in them but it's super tenuous and all that kind of stuff you know right so I don't know. I, I, just, I think it, 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 yeah, was, I, it was grounded in realism just from a like circumstantial geographical, like I'm just, I'm familiar with those spots and whatever. Well, he also mentioned Price Chopper, which is a big, you know, upstate New York, Vermont. That's right. Uh, yeah. Place. Price Chopper, like Bennington. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I do wonder if you guys think that it was like successful, like what going into the book, I, I read up about what it was going to be. And I think I, I, I expected more of like, not a straightforward, but a more clear minded, maybe critique of the financial crisis and just towns rotting in general. And I, I felt myself more confused by the characters and less intrigued or less like, I feel like the argument wasn't totally made well against a rotting town and didn't really display all the horrors or problems in a concise way. I like, agree with you. I, I was sort yeah. of like found myself longing more for like a more direct addressing of the sort of economic environmental decay. And I feel like, yeah, I think there was a lot more focus on the, the sort of, yeah, I just, I just agree. I think that that was, that was sort of lost. I feel like it came out strong in the beginning yeah. to, to an extent. And then it just kind of left as a, as a theme and we're just sort of supposed to assume it's in the background, but it's kind of gets lost. Yeah. I mean, it, to, it, it was, sorry, just one thing I just want to say, it felt like Evan Dara like knows he's a modern postmodern writer and he's like, I'm going to write this in a postmodern way. And that, that's, that was like, it felt really hitting me on the head with that, like showing you, showing us who he or they are. Yeah. Like, this is how I'm yeah. going to write this story and it's going to be in this way. I think um, you're, you're right though, that he's, they, ah, oh, fuck, whatever this, this entity Evan. is, uh, Evan, right. There we go. Um, is maybe attempting to do something completely different from their like previous, work which i think is very much like this that, that plus you know just extreme and so yeah it, it could just be a matter of like evan dara's is is not at super comfortable with doing a more grounded realistic mode i mean yeah but i also agree <clears throat> with morgan that like as somebody who loves experimentation and not direct non-directness and and you know finds that it's more akin to realism to 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 avoid you know capital r realism all the economic issues and the decay and the fucking complexities of that and the images that can be derived from that can create so many you know i don't know weird spooky complicated postmodern you know what i mean like we're all postmodern so it's like uh you can still tackle those issues in a way that's effective and informative and not i don't know it's like not do what evan dara did which seems to be gesture towards them sometimes effectively sometimes not but just and then dance away every time yeah, but I and I but I felt like the Marcus chapter was so successful and it was so like the it was yeah. such a like it was a complete 180. It felt it felt like and I felt like it was really successful and I found myself thinking during that chapter like shit, I wish there was a lot more of this. Um yeah. But even that, you know, I was like, okay, here's a here's a nuts person having a manic episode and deciding to start an entire global, you know, uh, uh, community of scholars in gratitude mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and like a school system. And he's going to be like the grand poobah of, of gratitude and all this kind of stuff. Like, and, and it's still like, what was the end? What, right. what, what happened? You know, he, he, he gets sidelined by Carol Mm hmm. And then we get what the 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 uh, more disjointed dialogue, presumably by like the new crop of people that have been yeah re replanted into into uh, the town, and then an unfinished sentence. Yeah. Uh, certainly an unsatisfying <laughs> in that way, but like in in the although it's kind of absurd the some of the content of the of the Marcus chapter I do think a lot of the descriptions of just like the mundanity of like life he's sort of talking about his dinner routine and his coffee routine yeah. and certain things about 
that I felt like I wanted more of that about the other characters throughout mm-hmm. that was done really well in that chapter. Or him like going yeah. going to the bar and like there's just a sign on the door that says like we quit or like we're closed and no yeah. one's there. Yeah. That that, that whole description that hold it yes, definitely. That whole description about like the right aid that went in yes. and everyone's missing it. And then everyone's like, wait, that was like we all protested that because it displaced a mom and pop like apothecary. And now and now we like miss this. And it's like we hate the enemy of the enemy. And it's just like I thought that was a nice little yeah touch of like also kind of the absurdity where like you can like decry you, you can start feeling sad for like a Starbucks that's been in your town yes. for 10 years, even yeah. though initially it destroyed some coffee shop you didn't like but it was like owned by a lady you knew yeah you know, just like that that whole process again it's so much more emotionally effective and it's just there's a little too little of it mm-hmm. i think i just got to say morgan you said that you like descriptive writing yeah does that mean you like fiction now you know <laughs> <laughs> I, you enjoyed some fiction writing in a, in I, a did, fiction I did and i will say that i i enjoyed it more than other <laughs> other as this was a challenging read for me as someone who does not read fiction very often if at all uh it was definitely a, a it was a shock to the system but i i did i did really like the marcus chapter i have to say nice well, that's yeah i, I wanted, should, right? we should maybe we should have this was this is a, was a little bit of an experiment <laughs> it's not I, I i won't say you're anti-fiction or hostile to fiction you just don't do a lot of and so it was we were just kind of yeah i probably have the because i don't read much fiction and i i it's just not because i read a lot of other things for for work and i don't don't do this very often um i probably have the sensibilities of like a 60 year old white boomer man <laughs> Like, give me a story <laughs> about boats, or like, uh, yeah. Morgan has an entire shelf of just like Dean Koontz novels. <laughs> <laughs> those, <laughs> those are scary, man. Uh, You'd also I mean, have the, honest, the, the, the squeamishness of of sex scenes, which is very funny. Oh God! I mean, to be honest, anyone would be squeaming at the uh, squeaming at squeaming those, uh, <laughs> at those uh, those fucking passages they were awful awful are they are there are there i mean i can't think of many successful sex scenes that like i can recall from i mean i don't know i mean it's a whole genre people make a lot of money on well yeah yeah. i've never read any of any like any books that i would call like erotica but i assume they're better at it than most people who don't specialize in it yeah it just feels <laughs> like a, always a moment of just ooh, it just ooh. i uh my parents had a a, a book <laughs> that i definitely read and that's all i'll say about that uh <laughs> it's called i shudder at your touch yeah <laughs> Oh. And, it, and it was no get it the good twist it was a uh it was a horror it was an anthology series of horror writers doing erotica but like horrific erotica weird Ew. so it was it was a straight as they say not my proudest fab but like <laughs> there are some there was some strange shit but in also that. not your most difficult not my net <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I I will amend my claim. I've read some D.H. Lawrence books that have had some pretty fucking gnarly sex scenes. Yeah, he's. And I thought we're done. I'm pretty okay. He's pretty good at it. It can be hot. Like there is something completely different about about reading erotic stuff, obviously, <laughs> than seeing it. Wow, Matt, pretty profound save it. Uh, but <laughs> but no, you know, this is is this what it means to be sapiosexual? <laughs> <laughs> stop oh god i'm sorry i mean so, since we're putting it on the table though I, to be honest a couple months ago when we were making fun of those bigfoot novels i i downloaded one i read it <laughs> and Chuck i Tingle. and i and i enjoyed it and uh bigfoot erotica i, might, I showed yeah, you the bigfoot cool. erotica well yeah it, it was it started out with just laughing at it and then i was like i'm kind of curious about this and then i read it and i kind of enjoyed it <laughs> Yeah, so we read we read you of, loud and clear. That's a part of me now. That's something I've done. Chuck Ting, that's Chuck Tingle, right? That's or is that someone else doing a I Chuck think, Tingle? I thing? think the one that I sent was Chuck Tingle. Paul, I think, had a different one. 
I yeah. forget. I I downloaded a different one than I sent you. <laughs> I forgot it. I downloaded it on my Kindle. I read it and I deleted it. So Next I like, week, I got him spine crackers. <laughs> <laughs> spine tingles. Oh my God, no. That, that's oh. Patreon only. Yeah. Oh. And then it's like I uh, and the Brontosaurus put his whole head and neck up my ass or whatever his <laughs> books are. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, how do we get back on, on point? Well, here? okay, I wanted to read a couple passages that, because I, I, I feel like I've been overly negative and I, I want to find some of the passages that I really liked and read them. Because again, I think there were passages that were really successful at the target, achieving the target. And even some of them were ones that were out of place and like, who, why is this person saying that? But, but they were well written, they're, they're well done, they're meaningful. And it's not like just dropped in the middle of a conversation that makes no sense, like that other one that I read, in my opinion. So anyway, yeah. here's I have, here's a couple that I'll read. Um, this one is from, this is on page 80. It's right at the top. Um, and uh, this is just, a, just, this is just kind of dropped in out of, with nothing, no con, like, we don't know who's saying this, there's no context. I must run so as not to be run from. I must leave before the will for leaving leaves me. I go to my kaleidoscope alive, filled with drenched and fragrant pains and not faded into compensations and not distance in frames. I, but enough, the spiral swells. The more I say, the more I see, I have more to say. If I do not go now, I will be submerged in useless meanings. I will never be able to outrun the words. And like, it's kind of contextless and whatever, but I think it's was what nice and good and, uh, liked it same i think it's not connected in a way that's easily linked but right. there is a, there is a pretty there is a kind of yeah i've also been just sort of clowning on the book more than anything but there's like there's a through line of thought here that i still picked up on that i appreciate and agree with if not yeah. like how it was presented like right. uh yeah i got something here it just says um let's see this is somebody this is like somebody talking to Rick about about not derivatives but like the idea of being derivative or like derivativeness which I think is intentional and he just goes you lose clarity uh this is on 120 at the like sort of bottom um you lose clarity you you lose like the possibility of difference of going out from yourself everything just becomes an example of something else in this insulated constantly recycling little loop of confirmation you know like just little little nuggets like that yes start to create uh, a bigger picture of of the critique that i feel like is just i don't know maybe it's baby brained of me but uh too coyly obscured yeah yeah for, no for i agree. its own good I, yeah, I think i i think that there it could have been again again i think the issues with this book were are sort of it, some it, like issues of balance balance between yeah like those those genuine those genuine gem nuggets that are in there and the awkward kind of stuff that doesn't really help and some of the other kind of tonal balance issues i feel like we've been talking about i have i have a couple more that i'm happy to read too um, yeah this one's on uh and again, these, these follow the same form. These are just quotes from unknown speakers. Um, so this one is on 118. Uh, and in my dreams, now again last night, a shower still running, a PC mouse single clicked, a half consumed bowl of blueberries. I am near Mount Vesuvius. I see the eruption in the distance. I see the sun tide coming, flooding, slalloping, slurping at the sides of the mountain. And I stand and open my arms and I welcome the churning, scalding tsunami embrace. <laughs> and again, it's just that that's a good, effective sort of like, like uh, juxtaposition of like these weird mundane things of, of everyday life that kind of Morgan was talking about, like that we get a lot of in the like Marcus chapter with this kind of more poetic, bigger thing. And uh, I think, you know, yes, I think with what you were just read and then like, the little chunk I read, uh, which is about kind of about Rick having a sense of identity in order to see others and therefore create a like 
a loop that isn't just sort of this diffused, you know, uh, again, derivative general generalizing essentially. Yeah. It creates a kind of like toxic potential in everybody that can just co- be infinitely harvested <laughs> uh, for nobody's benefit. Yes. Uh, except, uh, it's just like, and then you're saying like this, like rush of like natural flow of lava and just all this shit, like be, I, I don't know. You just start to get a sense of uh, particularity. Like that's one of the, the ideas of the book, I think, is like this town being it's a, a particular thing with like residents and and people having a really hard time arguing against all these weird <clears throat> insidious logics that start to like come into play that uh, a lot of townsfolk start to agree with of like, you know, you got like a kind of prisoner's dilemma thing going on. You got sunken cost fallacies going on. You got people just trying to like fucking unload their house and get out while the going's good, creating right. a panic, which is, you know, that's like a, a, a classic bubble burster type of scenario. Um, but yeah, I think in specific, like um, particularity, solidity, like we're, we're here in all our disappointing spe- specificity. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's not going to be ideal, but an ideal is such an exploited black box half the time or most of the time, yeah. something like that. But I think that there's also, and this is where I'm getting back to some of the like, some of these like weird kind of suggested, whispered at like surreal elements. Like there's all of these moments of like police like breaking into people's houses and like ripping them from their homes for seeming like unknown reasons. And like, um, like we said this, this disease that's potentially going around and we don't know if those two things are connected. And then there's all these descriptions of these like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's like these fake people basically that it seems like that the city's hired to like walk around and look busy all day. Uh, right. Which is this really sort of strange it creates a very bizarre effect. But then you I think, think it's about- a, It's effective too. I think that like, I, that's one element I wanted more of was, I wanted more of a surrealist side because- Yeah. Like going back to base c- cathedral, which in retrospect, I think I, I got to give that one a five. We talked about it separate from the podcast. But, well, is this, is this um, an official updated score? Yeah, 4.9 for now. Ooh. Might go up to five though. Um, but we talked about how like those surrealist elements added such a rich layer to the storytelling and they were like incredibly out there and you couldn't not see them um and i I don't mind a subtle uh surrealist element i think there's books you've read that had something a lot more subtle but this was like the 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 balance of it was it was like 0.01 percent or maybe not that low but it was really low and I, it was like confusing almost because like there wasn't enough of them in yeah. those moments. Did you have that same? Yeah, yeah, where it's like, yeah, where I, I, I think, you know, you're referring to moments where <clears throat> it's either Rick or Carol or whoever, whomever the I, the generalized I is in this book. Mm. Um, like the people on the streets kind of like milling about but not recognizing them or whatever. Yeah, and it's like, it's confusing. Like, is it supposed to give us this eerie sense that this is like some deliberate nefarious activity or is this like, it's, it's so it's few and far between to the point where you're not sure if it's intentionally done that way. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, and there's, and there's like, um, there's like a, 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 a rash of like unexplained terrible traffic downtown yeah. of like people trying to leave and coming through and like, potentially a bunch of people like laying down in the street to get run over right that comes up a couple times like but we're not sure if it's like real or what and then there's like there's uh marcus's whole ongoing like you know jazz thing with his neighbor where they play records to each other across the street but we don't know if it's real or if the guy is even really there Uh, right what about ezra packing and repacking yeah, yeah. All day. Yeah. The guy who just packs and repacks his suitcases to leave every all day. Yeah. Right. And he's like, oh, I hate it, but it's the best thing I can think of to do. Yeah. I guess actually that's pretty effective. <laughs> I thought that was cool. But again, yeah, like, I thought the, that was cool. These are the things that I'm like, these are these were these parts were really effective. And 
eerie and like I think capture the sort of like like spectrality of this whole thing you know really it becomes very like you know I don't know like yeah is it real is it artificial is this the map or the territory like I liked um Ian Ian is homeless and he's staying in like an abandoned like nice Victorian uh with some other homeless people and they all get they all get rousted out and put in paddy wagons and, and brought to another house in a nice area yes that's an exact replica of the one they're staying in but it's empty and there's just a prison cell inside the living room yes <laughs> i don't again i don't really know what the point is except to just i don't know maybe like show that like it's absurd and 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 the it's akin to the just being the same kind of cost and thing to like do this to people or let them stay in a house uh, that isn't being used or whatever, but. Yep. Yeah, that one in particular was like a confusing one for me because I didn't know what the, like, what, is the cell just representing like where society thinks these people should be? Is it like that over the top of a metaphor? I, I, I don't know. I. That was a confusing one. Yeah, it could just be absurd for absurd sake. Like a lot of this stuff kind of seems. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what I that's the my biggest qualm with the whole book is like I, beautifully. Said. I like I like wow. absurdity, but I like it to be a part of the storytelling and not just be there because like I'm being absurd, and I'm a writer writing. I'm, I think I'm hating on it too much right now, but. I, in general, I don't appreciate that form of just like peacocking. I'm I'm hating <laughs> I'm hating on it like a student that I know can do better. Like yeah, I I expect more because I actually think that the writer is is seems pretty good to me and and could do this better. <laughs> and we get we get moments of that like we've been yes. saying, which is part of the other frustrating thing. Like i found a piece i found a section near the end that is both i think a good exa another example of like something that's well done but also sort of describes some of the problems that i think we're having with the book so it's a, it's on 213 um and this is in the this is in marcus's chapter this is a description of him walking around hanging up his uh his uh assistant advertisement signs oh my god i love this which that was <laughs> that was hilarious i thought that whole description of him writing the sign um but okay so it says uh up to his jaw in his parka he walks he walks from his block crosses south winooski street crosses pearl there at the very beginning of the mall at the height of its effects he stops he had not allowed himself to pro had he not allowed himself to process this to see here in aberg the future has come home dead stores rows of them stare unbreathing for behind pressing scrambling huffing people big clad against the chill and wind, eyes both indrawn and afire. Service vehicles smear all but unsullied gutters. Service folk tend discard bins only holding planted bits of cosmetic waste. Cars round corners and round them again 70 seconds later. Steams and sounds and abrupt shattering glints, inconceivable activity and nothing, absolutely nothing being accomplished, nothing moving forward. And I'm like, I think that's that's a really interesting description and obviously this is coming through marcus now so we i don't know how much like credence we should give it because he's in this kind of like manic state but it makes it seem like the whole thing is like this fake you know pointless churn right of and it's like in that description and in some of the people's minds it's like because the town is sort of faking it to make itself look like it's not dying but it also is like, is it ever anything other than that? Even in the best yeah. of times. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like that. I like that metaphor or, you know, assessment of that. I think that's smart and good. I think that was a, a good pass. Uh, it makes me a little, think a little bit of like the Truman Show and like Synecdoche, yes. New York. And I was yeah. getting a lot of Synecdoche, New York vibes when I first started reading. It. And I thought it was going to be like, just amp up and propel and, end up in this like just terrible manic state which it kind of did but i wanted like more energy i guess um 
the synecdoche is just like overbearing and it, the uh the levels of just like the going back and forth is, they come to a point at the end that's just like terrible and i don't know this didn't totally do that <laughs> well i was just i was also thinking about right is it was it any any different ever right and i do think again coming back to what Morgan was saying, that it's interesting that a, a neuroatypical, for instance, is one of the prominent main characters, like a couple uh, with along with a couple other kind of like loser, losery, kind of smart or like just stubborn people is like who you get descriptive, uh, uh, you know, analysis of their experiences is 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 these people who don't capitulate to whatever weird pressure is being applied. And those always tend to be kind of like stranger folks or yeah, again, antisocial in some good way where they're not um, just kind of like <laughs> stampeding to and fro. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of what was intended was like everyone else is like, cause again, you get the, the whole, like you get the, the stubborn ass sociology student collapsing the whole shit. <laughs> right. And, and, and all of these teachers going, motherfucker, we made the STEM, whatever building <laughs> so nice. <laughs> like that why? part is realistic. That part is realistic. Yeah. yeah. But I think that carries over to like the logic operating on the whole town. It's like, okay. And now, and now we're, we're doing a pump and dump on you fuckers. Right. And you got you got to leave. We're going to get fresh blood in here and there's always going to be a couple like people that are like I don't get why everyone thinks this is great. I'm going to try and do some dumb business venture like an employment agency or I'm <laughs> you know autistic and I think I can uh you know start basically a, a a secular church. Right. You know, these are the people that get kind of in the way. Mm. You know what I mean? John Lewis, good, good trouble. <laughs> no, come on, man. <laughs> Black Swan. I don't know what that is. What? <laughs> I don't know. So the chapters are the population, right? Do we all agree no, about that? It's all over the place because it's no. like nine hundred at some. Well, point. it starts out at okay. So the chapter titles are these, yes, movies, right? And they are the first chapter is is labeled thirty eight thousand eight hundred and thirty nine, and it's that number steadily goes down over the course of the book, all the way down to no, it doesn't. Yes, it okay. does. I mean, there's a few where it jumps back up briefly, but like the trend is down all the way okay. to before um, before Marcus's chapter. It's all the way down to three hundred and thirty six. Yeah, and then there's Marcus's chapter, which is just labeled with the the, the X. Mm -hmm. And then the, the new people are coming in sort of at the end. It's so, frankly, it's sort of a hopeful ending, but also not in some ways. Um, but yeah, yeah then it's going, it's starting to go back up at the end into the 800s. I did not read it as hopeful at all. Well, yeah. There I mean, are people, people coming people back, back into the town, but they're, they're, they're talking about how cheap everything is. Yeah, right. Right. I think significantly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like a beautiful house and it was only like blah, blah, blah amount. <laughs> like I can go take a vacation and then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you're, I mean, I didn't actually make the connection that that was the population. I think it's because when it, when it jumped to 336, it, that was like a, a wrench in it for me. I was like, I don't see a pattern here anymore. Yeah. That's a huge, that's a huge leap that right. seems almost unrealistic to me. Yeah. I don't know if like how much time is supposed to pass, but I mean, I don't know. It's quite a big drop in population, <laughs> but it, it does seem like that's what he was going for. I had that same thought. It did seem that's not a, that's not a, I don't know. That's a very unrealistic. It seems to me yeah. like drop from, of like literally 30,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. 9, I mean, that's like, yeah, that's like the town you live in, Matt, dropping to, to 300 people. It's like that would look that would insane. Be, yeah. yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah. That would be oh. apocalyptic. 
Which there all is because like some, some apocalypse apocalyptic vibes in parts of this too, but yeah, post apocalypse. So that would mean like the the college closing down caused that much of a drop in population. Like, eh, I can't really. That's just a little unbelievable. But if you think about it as Burlington, that's way more believable. That's true. I mean, yeah, UVM is like the core of that of that town. Or like so. Ithaca, Ithaca or something. It's like yeah. the town's absolutely fucking dominated by a school. Like just like they're they're literally an outgrowth of a school, basically. Right. You know? yeah. Like yeah, that shit. Can, both, that shit can ruin the town. In both those places, like I know Burlington, you like can't <clears throat> you can't get it from like a major highway. You can't get to it from a major highway. It's like oh, you, really? you have to kind of take like B highways there. It's not like like a lot of towns in Vermont are like that. And Vermont is Vermont is having a huge price increase in their houses or like the the I don't know. It's just interesting that now also it's like real estate in Vermont is surging. And right. like I said, the, the kind of COVID scenario is is making some of the stuff in here way more pressing because I was also thinking about um, build back better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And fucking the Great Reset and all of these kind of ideas that people are talking about. It just kind of feels like that. It's like these people have no agency. There's some force that's just like squeezing them out and getting new people in at different prices and blah, blah, blah with new expectations and a kind of new perspective so that you never get a uh, solidity. Right. It's right. like because like I was I was thinking about this other little random thing I underlined, which is just uh, existence is contingency and absence is pure potential. We are replacing all dimension with time. Yeah. 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 And I think you're right in terms of the ending. That's we're starting to see basically the cycle repeat itself. Right. Yeah. And that's that what the is that what the back of the book means to you? This confused me, but that maybe that's what that means. That's also the first line of the book, right? Is it something always going on? Yeah, maybe it, maybe that's about like that that loop. Yeah. I think we got our about. nice our nice infinite loop happening here. There it is, baby. Yeah. Our Mobius strip book. <laughs> <laughs> With some bad penis talk in there. That's redundant. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, penis hell. Pubis. Pubis oh, hell. God. Penis hell. Rick's Rick's redundant penis. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sad. That's a very little sad phrase. <laughs> so oh, one yeah, last, yeah. I have one last little just thing that oh, Marcus, Mark is just describing. This is him kind of describing his inspiration for the, the fucking G unit or whatever he wants to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, we didn't really talk about it. We don't have to get into it, but like, yeah, like the, the whole notion of gratitude. Yeah. Like, that's the most manic shit I've ever read. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know, Marcus. Like, I, yeah. I, feel, I feel so. I feel so good. The fucking the the same bean salad that I eat every day is a blessing. And like, oh my god, the lights are fucking transcendent. And like, I'm crying because uh, I have shoes on and just like random stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna start a business. I'm gonna start an <laughs> enterprise. Uh, <laughs> but he he does say it staggers him. He has found something that is vaster objectively even than his subjective experience of it. Mm. And that feels, again, like another cheeky description of something bad. Yes. <laughs> Which is, you know, the town and, and, the, and the machinations happening, like, just over it. And just, and just how little influence or say anybody has in these systems that structure our lives, right? Like... Yeah, City Hall is 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 very pointedly in this book run by some asshole like uh you know like the like the fucking whatever the 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 governor of or who who's the motherfucking California mayor or governor? Well, Gavin Newsom Gavin is the governor. Gavin Newsom is who I'm thinking of. Like okay. just eating at uh you know the uh, French laundry and <laughs> like go and like going on vacation and well, stuff. It's it's the mo- it's super relevant because just this week fucking Ted Cruz Fled, yes, fled, uh huh, fled Texas to get away from the storm to Cancun, and that the the city hall, the politicians at city hall are very similar figures in this book. 
Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's just some some idiot named Farina, something Farina. Right. And uh, it's just this place that ends up becoming unresponsive and notably, again, I'm just thinking now of like the storming of the Capitol. And then like when election night happens, it's like crazily armed. It's just yeah. the, the, the city hall just ends up being this this place with nobody in it that will never respond to you that is surrounded by police. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. As they watch the changing of the guard, but it and the guard ends up being not actual policemen, but human beings in residences. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which, right. So it's a completely like inverted system. And I thought, yeah. I thought a lot of the, the 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 sort of sort of what you said earlier, Matt, that the the descriptions of the workings of local government, a lot of those characters, I thought were funny and and accurate and well done. Yeah. Yeah, I like the. I'm thinking of the moment where Rick and Carol go in. And they're talking to a guard and they're trying to like get the name or information of, of a couple people in city hall i think yeah and the guard is just like so he's just so distant interested and she, carol ends up giving him the name of some like a random person because she had a uh inkling that he was just like not even looking or not even, like or just trying to get her to leave yeah and she was like uh who can you look up uh is jane lewis still here and he like looks at his thing and he's like, yeah, she's she doesn't work here either. And I, I actually like that. It was like a weird, surreal conspiracy happening that was effective. Right. She's like, Jane Lewis isn't a real person who worked yep. here. <laughs> yeah. I think we solved it, actually. Yeah. We, we don't know why. We don't know what the... Uh, I had some other, I don't know, more theor- philosophical... Go oh, for it. Go for I it. Well, I can't find it now. Oh. You're just it was, eating your scallop. It, it was something you highlighted, you said? I took a big bite of my scallop, and <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> it's probably cold now, too. That room temp scallop. Oh, you got to love a room temp scallop. Sure it's oh, I found it. <laughs> Matt, 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 scallop ASMR. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I was just, I was laughing. This is completely apropos of nothing but i was laughing at the idea of somebody during valentine's day who's single um just do romancing themselves so hard so that they can masturbate later <laughs> like they like go out to candlelit dinner and they like eat like oysters yes and then they like dip fucking strawberries and chocolate and take a bath in like milk with rose petals <laughs> and then they just beat off uh, and sleep <laughs> That's really funny because that's kind of what I did on Valentine's Day. I went out to dinner in Manchester and drove around with my dog. And then I went home and did or did not do that last thing you said. But um, it's an accurate, funny little bit there, Matt. Oh, wow. I didn't, <laughs> God, I didn't mean to hit so close to the bone, but <laughs> so to speak. Um, God. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Come on now. We're just having fun. It's just fucking... <laughs> boys and the and the one and a different person <laughs> God. sorry here's a serious quote actually um which is very theory ish where is this from uh 154 at the very bottom the kind of indent yeah uh so it's it starts what is the proceeding yep So what is the proceeding unsaid? The imposed premise in whose conditions we rattle. The implicit implicit postulate that with with our every whim and volition and gesture, we continue, modify, extend, affirm, even through de-affirming it. Mm. What is that statement, that referent, that no one will say or can say with rigor and conviction? The central and determining predicate that can no longer be brought forth. Why can we never get to the one organizing proposition that in no uncertain terms will, and then it breaks off. Yeah. Again, uh, these are the little scattered breadcrumbs of like what I think Evan Dar is very like seriously trying to do while being funny and doing a satire and overall kind of. Yeah. It's, mixing, capital, mixing it's, it ca- it it's capitalism, right? It's, it's post, capitalism. Post premise. It's capitalism. <laughs> It's it's it's, it's, a, it's a very like uh like Mark Fisher capitalist realism type lot like section little paragraph, but you guys know as 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 big uh, 
as people that are criticizing it obliquely all the time, right? Like in your work and whatever, it's like it is it is fucking lame a lot of the time to hear someone just say the word capitalism when they're criti- like you you can wholly agree with a person. Yeah. A lot of the time they're just like, and we gotta fucking and like it's like capitalism, man. And yeah. it's just like you're yeah. like you do have to do shit like this and look at it like this, you know, not necessarily like this book's like specifically but like you have to approach it from these these angles because it is this it is the environment Mm -hmm. essentially so that's that's a complicated thing you know you can you can say it like once and then you have to get some Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh i think that's what this is trying to 90 percent of the time i mean like he sort of says in that passage being people who are like being against capitalism is is just it's like that meme of the guy uh like doing a skateboard trick with a rake off of a thing and then it just hits him in the face and it's, it winds up being the same thing. It's just like being, being, being like being against capitalism so, can so often, if you're not thoughtful about it, like for some of these people if you're just deploying it in a goofy way, just winds up being for capitalism with more steps and right. supporting it in ways that you don't even really understand. And, and that's that whole, why, even if you- logic even if you deaffirm it as he said right it just ends up affirming it yeah that blows yeah yeah <laughs> it does blow i gotta say that that, that, uh, that, uh, that blows more like bad bad pullism whoa more like capitalism like but in the hip way of like lies I'm trying to go with no capitalism. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! <laughs> right, Zoomers. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. So, before we do our wrap up segments, I have one mini segment that I think we should do, which you proposed, which is who? Oh yeah. If, if we found out Evandera's identity, what would who would the funniest person be for Evandera to secretly be? Oh, I can see this motherfucker's face, but I can't remember their name. Oh, you had a good one. <laughs> yeah, before the podcast started, I said Bill Cosby. <laughs> I think that I think that's still my answer. That would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> what is his name? Do you have one, Morgan? Mm, maybe like Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak? <laughs> is Pat Sajak alive? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I think so. That's a good one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Alex, Alex Trebek. Trebek. Ooh, yikes. Oh no, no, no. You know who I was really thinking of? Regis Kilbin, because I think they kind of look similar. Kilbin. Kilbin. Regis. Oh, Regis. <laughs> He's Kilbin. dead too, bro. Oh, that, no, that's <laughs> wow. That's actually a, a, a video gaming YouTube personality. Oh. oh. So that's why it was in my head. Yeah, Regis Philbin. Oh, I thought I thought you were just thinking Regis Deadman. Yeah. <laughs> but i think pat sajak and regis philbin kind of look similar i was gonna uh, uh david brooks the the new york times writer yeah, the yeah. Writer the new york times. His secret literary identity oh that's a little God. more uh for the more patrician listeners <laughs> <laughs> to hear matt's answer you have to join the patreon i don't really know i I don't know. People Oprah thought Winfrey. it was people thought it was Wallace too. That was another. Oh really? Theory. Yeah, they thought it was like a Wallace pen name, uh, but that doesn't seem right like to Britney me. Spears. Just Britney Spears. I yeah, it's like just, just yeah. I mean, hey, free Britney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about how about a Simon Cowell? <laughs> <laughs> That's just ludicrous, Paul. That would be ludicrous. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you don't you don't have one at all, Gabe? I mean, I I it's it's Bill Cosby's really funny. I think um, <laughs> I mean I think it would I just you can't, you can't say that out of context anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta take that clip that and put it in the video. Yeah, that's it. Podcast. I'm just gonna do yeah, that. <laughs> I just think I just think it would be funny if it was like Chris Jenner, like. Mm. I mean, when did when did Cosby go to prison? 
couple years ago. This book, this book was written in 2000. So this book was written in 2013. It, so, yeah. I mean, it's possible that it's him. Could have been, yeah. And he... Kanye West in, like, fugue states. I, th- I, I, like I, I, actually, I actually think it's Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would hate that so that much. Nice. It's just Ninja. <laughs> Destiny. Destiny. Oh God. You know, if it was Destiny, no, no, fucking fuck. I'm sorry. That's not even fair to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Charles Dickens' great, great, great grandson. Just kind of, that would be just kind of. <laughs> Burn more. That would just pockets. be kind of. <laughs> that would just be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be cool. That would um, be cool. Is it? so this is a a little segment we like to call we literally just read another book yeah where we uh indulge our harry potter lizard brains and put all the slytherin brains from the book we just read into harry potter houses this is going to be a tough one yeah this is not super clear to me (laughs) Okay, so Rick. I'm actually putting Rick and Carol both in Hufflepuff. Yeah. I think, well, okay, I'm going to tell you what I think about Carol yet. For me, Rick is a Hufflepuff. I'm going to put Rick in there for sure. He kind of just goes along with what Carol wants until he just like kind of lamely like decides to go pursue his job. Right, which is like not, it's not like a dream gig or anything like that. It's just like moderately better. And also, I don't know. He seems like he kind of wants to leave Carol. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the same kind of thing. Just sort of like weak, conflict averse. That seems fair. Milk toast guy who's like smart, but it's just like, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say Hufflepuff? So, yeah. We got four for Puff. That's a that's a that's a universal. That's a that's a fucking. That's a clean sweep. That's a clean sweep. <laughs> All right. Uh, I. I disagree. We know Paul thinks Carol's Hufflepuff too. I think Carol is Slytherin. Slytherin. Easy clap. Is that only because like the business she's trying to create is like kind of mean and awful? Not that, only that. that. Well, okay. Why do you think Slytherin? I mean, that's. Just, I mean, just get Slytherin vibes. Mm. It's she's all about like, vibes. It's a lot about vibes. Slightly manipulative of Rick. She's definitely has some sus business motive (laughs) um and she tries to use her body to manipulate rick into not moving to atlanta which just gives me also slytherin vibes that you that's my thoughts exactly slytherin i feel uh the same yeah all right well i'm probably wrong but let me defend myself uh i think that she is a hufflepuff just for being (laughs) with rick um and wanting him so bad why would she? Why would a Slytherin want a Hufflepuff? That because they like because she likes exerting power over someone she knows she can control. Right. All Especially right, somebody her, who could bottle. who could maybe like get get her some traction she can't get on her own. Yeah. All right. I, with Marcus. I that. But I, I I'm also unclear whether or not she knew of like her own morality in starting the business she was trying to do. I, I feel like she just was kind of going with the flow in a way a Hufflepuff does without thinking about the consequences so that's why i was more just like she's like a bad a bad hufflepuff yeah i could see it I, but I, I think i'm gonna stick with slytherin just because mm-hmm. of the way she treats rick all right you could just be a good slytherin we could split the difference there medium slytherin <laughs> medium slytherin <laughs> um, <laughs> what a we... stupid phrase medium slytherin medium. <laughs> Do we think we know enough about Ian to put him in a house? He's the sort of ephemeral drifter. I don't really think so. No, I don't think so. And I think the only other one is Marcus. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I mean, pure Ravenclaw. I was thinking that too. Yeah, he's just too. he's all about the pursuit of knowledge and the good. Yeah, he's just doing crunches and eating mung beans and trying to make <laughs> like try to like transcend Bulls. somehow. Bulls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Manic he made me. I, I've eaten mung beans before. He made me want to give him another shot because every time he was like, "Today's bout of mung beans, the yeah. the skin d- had a little bit of a resistance before the give and the proliferation oh. of flavors burst." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Excellent <laughs> mouthfeel." 
It kind of reminded me of <laughs> beans. I do like my beans. <laughs> I love beans too, dude. Deriving so much joy out of just a fucking can of beans and just <laughs> like with the same gusto as you would a, a mixed not even, meal. I fucking not even beans. like uh not even baked beans, they're like plain beans, right? <laughs> black, baby, just black. A can of black. black <laughs> I do them up though. I do them up. I do hot sauce and vinegar and all the different spices and shit. Like it's that rocks. A little BBQ sauce sometimes. Like you see, I, I'm messing up. I mix Ooh. it up. <laughs> hard to watch <laughs> it's hard to watch but delicious to eat <laughs> so who's yeah who's laughing now gabe's getting so many more utils versus dolors or whatever exactly out of, out of eating beans <laughs> i i'm when it comes to eating just basic like shit food i am <laughs> the fucking utility monster. I, 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 get, I get absolutely unreasonable amounts of pleasure from just eating like a fucking tortilla with hot sauce <laughs> I know you're just the muncher. <laughs> just <laughs> love. <laughs> oh, and 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 uh, Marcus is the muncher. Oh, because oh. the mung beans. Marcus also, <laughs> for one final bit of clarification, I believe is a, is POC. Oh, did, did, did we get, did we get that? I missed that. Did I don't think that? we said that. I I actually affirmatively did not realize that reading no. the book. I think there's one. I was like on the fence, and then there was a, like, I'm being racist. He he can smoke weed without being black. And I was like, oh my oh god, my god <laughs> dude! You're gonna get us fucking canceled. Oh my god! But then uh, I think it's affirmed. Oh, I totally missed I that. Miss that. Oh, okay. So I'm not canceled. Start over. Re-record the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, I'm just, it's just a little roughhouse joking. I mean, it is interesting that, he, I mean, it is an interesting, he base, he's, he works as a landscaper for a rich white family. So, yeah, yeah we could talk about the racial dynamics for sure, but. Of which there, if he's not, I, I, I'm I pretty sure he's just like, he is, but like, if he's not, it just, it's, it's a glaring omission, but also potentially more true to life for right. a lot of Vermont towns, you know, like. I don't know. True. True. Uh, right, score. score time. Yeah, it's score time. Score corner. Um, Matt has to go last because it's his book. Right. Nice. Uh, so Paul or Morgan or me, who wants to go first? I'll go first. I feel like I never go first. I'm going to go first. All right. <clears throat> I want to give it a higher score than I'm going to, I think. Because I think it's a really interesting topic to try to approach in a book like this and i don't i think a lot of people i don't know of any other like novels that have really been written about the financial crisis like obviously there's plenty of ink spilled on it not in the nonfiction world right but i, I haven't seen it another book that like explicitly tries to talk about it like head on like this one sort of does maybe maybe not arguably not head on enough as we've been saying um but it, I def, I just felt like, like we said, for a book that's like so supposed to be so grounded in like realism and dialogue and sort of sprinkling in some of these surreal elements, I just felt too distanced from the characters in ways that just were not working for me in the way that I feel like the book wanted it to work. Um, so some good stuff, but I don't know. It's I would give it a two point seven two. Hmm. Mm. I mean, I'm pretty much like on the same page as you, I think, which is rare for us to agree so uh, like across the board. But I, I everything you said, I, I pretty much agree with too. I just like it missed it for me. And I think at this point, though, I, I'm not against this book in any shape or form because of its like um, ambition to be a little bit more sporadic or, you know, different than other books. I, I, at this point, I actually kind of like it. But if it, it still has to work, and it didn't really work for me, so I think I'm going to give it a. Two, I'm going to have to give it a two point four five. Nice. Nice. That's what I was thinking, like two point four. You know, I want I wanted to like it a lot more than I think that I did. Um, I had to recover emotionally for a few minutes after finishing it and being like, what did I just do for the past seven hours? But uh, <laughs> we, we appreciate you 
doing I, this thing that you hate. Yes. Uh, but it made me want to do it more. But I would say this book, I, I would agree with, with what's been said. I would give it a 2.4. So does that mean you're going to come back on the pod? Uh, maybe at some point, if you'll have me back. We'll find a, we'll find a good, a nice, a nice rollicking narrative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A healthy old yarn. Yes. And I, I appreciate you having me on. And we appreciate been, you being uh, here. It's a real pleasure watching this uh, endearing endearing thing start from a really endearing little book club over covid blossom into a really endearing podcast i'm proud of you boys oh thanks Aww. Mom. thank you morgan please, please don't say that <laughs> mama but, but but yeah mama real. pod <laughs> pod mama means a lot <laughs> i Google. actually matt what you said earlier uh if if morgan joins us like for other times we're well, three three boys and what some other person is that <laughs> The girl, three three boys and a other pubis. <laughs> oh you're, yeah, we have a we have a differently pubis person with us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mad. No, I'm not mad. <laughs> uh, my score again. I know I did this last time with with, uh, but I I think I I'm just more in. Like almost exactly Gabe's score, basically. Damn. Whoa. I'll say 2.73 just to make it a little different and a little higher. <laughs> cool. Whoa. But same, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Like want more of of these kind of things being discussed in yeah. liter in literary formats. Definitely. Which I'm sure, you know, obviously in anytime you say this, there's yeah, there probably are, but you know, yeah, this particular one. So, uh, uh, you're 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 sifting for gold. Yes. And you're finding little flakes of it, but yeah. overall, it's not a great yield. I am interested to read. What a capitalist way to describe the book. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the you can't get away from it, dude. Fuck. We are the problem. I am interested to this read is his water. first novel. <laughs> the Lost Scrapbook sounds really good to me. Like researching that one, that was like his first breakthrough mm -hmm. or it was his first book and it was like a big breakthrough i would actually be interested in reading that but and this one is like out of the three he's written this is like the least talked about and i think it falls flat for a lot of his readers so yeah i think i think again paul you kind of mentioned something that i think is true which is that dara's like doing something that they're not comfortable with potentially yeah and still and then reclining back on the the literary tricks bag of tricks that they have yeah and and it, and it i think it just makes it a little a little wobbly a little uneven yeah there's a little wobble to it mm -hmm. wobbly wobbly wop oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we've all done said something or not morgan she's totally fine but we was <laughs> wholesome there's nice shame shame sound bites in the, in this one yeah but mm -hmm. that's what it's about it's all about the shame sound bites. Listen, I am imperfectly imperfect in my particularity. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We leave and it on the table every time. Just sort of like this book was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a human, do I get more than a 2.7 rating? Nah, you get a <laughs> yeah. five bagger. Thanks, five. Total five bagger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Six bags of popcorn, two sodas. Yeah. In a box of snow caps. In a box of snow caps. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that candy, dude. Whoa. Okay. Now Whoa, we got now okay. we really got That's a problem. All right. Let's take now this to the end this before we start fighting. Let's swap over to the page, <laughs> the Patreon, and uh talk about snow caps. That's Thanks right. everyone. I'm gonna goodbye. Done, right? We are done now. <laughs>